Hi, Bob here with JD Squared. Thanks for tuning in to another training video concerning XR series of rotary cutters. In this particular training video, we're going to be talking about the automatic lifter. What the heck is that? Well, let me show you what it does here real quick. If we go towards it, basically, it's going to support, we'll go ahead on down a little bit further, it's going to support the workpiece when it's too far away from the stabilizer so that it doesn't sag down. Let's, let's come back, back this way. It's fully automatic. And in this video, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about putting lifters in, how they work, how to adjust it, you name it. By the end of this video, you're going to be a doggone expert. Nice. So let's get after it. The lifter is constructed out of three sixteenths inch stainless steel plate that has been lasered and bent. The reason we do that is if by some chance you have a bad moment and you crash the gantry into the lifter, you're probably going to damage it. So we're trying to minimize the cost to you if that unfortunate event happens. So normally if, that, if you are going to crash it, it's probably going to take out these two components right here. If you do it the first time, just send support pictures of the damaged pieces and we will be happy to replace it for you free of charge. However, if you do it the second time, you need to re-watch this video and now you're gonna pay for those parts. Not gonna be expensive, but we gotta get you to get some skin in the game. All right, that talks about the construction. Inside the lifter is an air cylinder which is gonna raise and lower it. Now that air cylinder has two air lines that are hooked to it. They are six millimeter or quarter inch pneumatic tubing. If you ever need to replace it, you could actually get it off Amazon. Well, anyway, that tubing, we do not want exposed because if we're cutting a part and that part falls on the tubing, it could damage the tubing. So up and down the entire length of the machine, about every four feet apart, we have these guard channels. So you will always run these two air lines through those guard channels, out the rear of the machine, and then you will connect it to the rear control panel in the rear, and I'll be showing you that in a little while. So, with that in mind, as a general rule, I will usually place a lifter very, very close to one of these guard channels, and if you do that, you should have no worries in the future. As you can see behind me, XR machines are pretty long. Heck, in their standard configuration, they're over 24 feet, and we're actually working on a 50-foot version of the machine now, which means, yeah, you're gonna end up supporting your workpiece if it's slender enough. So for instance, this right here, one-inch pipe, well, you could imagine if it's 24 feet long and we've got the stabilizer and the gantry all the way to the other end, most likely it's gonna sag in the middle. So as a general rule, what I like to do and what I suggest you do is place a lifter in the middle of the machine. And then if you are cutting a very long part and you wanna support the tubing on the end as the gantry starts moving this way, place another lifter on the far end. Now you could place four lifters in a machine. I have never, in two and a half years of building XRs, I've never used more than two. So keep that in mind. You could place it almost anywhere you want. And we actually have holes about every six inches to where you could bolt these things down. So that's pretty much gives you an overview of where you're gonna wanna place the lifters. Just remember, they're just there to support the tubing if you have a sag problem. If you don't have a sag problem, don't activate the lifter, just don't use them. This part here is what we refer to as a lifter adapter plate. They are designed to be configurable for different kinds of material that you're cutting, whether it's round, square, or rectangular. The standard lifter adapter plate that we ship with the machine has been designed to handle from half inch up to three and a half inch OD round tubing because that three and a half inch OD is the maximum that our round tube automatic stabilizer can handle. And most people are cutting less than three and a half inch anyway. You do not need a special adapter plate for every different size of round material. It, the idea is the lifter is just gonna support the material and let it spin inside it freely. So round tube is very, very easy to work with. Square tube is a different beast entirely. So if we take the adapter plate right here and we wanna use it with square, we're probably gonna need 
to either make a custom one or you could call us. We have different configurations available. And the idea is that we measure diagonally outside corner to corner. We take that measurement and we add about an eighth inch to three sixteenths of an inch to that width right here. So that if you were to place this in the middle, you could see where actually it's about a quarter of an inch this away. The idea is we want this thing to transition down the flat side, which will be about an inch to an inch and a half long. It's just straight vertical side, and it will transition into the curved, the bottom of the slot, and allow it to rotate. Now, when it gets into this position, she may try to wobble. You'll hear a little bit of wobbling when you're running this. Don't worry about it. It's not going to hurt a thing. It actually works amazingly well. Now, we make all of our plates out of 3 16 inch stainless steel. However, you can make your own just as easily out of anything from eighth inch up to maybe quarter inch mild steel, stainless, whatever you have laying around. If you want to make a custom plate for, let's just say you're doing, um, I don't know, one by three tubing or something like that, and you don't want to wait on us, just go ahead and make your own because all of our XRs have the ability to cut flat plates just as good as they cut round and square tubing. Use that functionality, make your own plate. You can go to www.jd2.com, the number two, and obtain the actual drawings of these parts. Just go to the support tab and head on down to XR and look for the lifters. And you'll be able to get those plans right there and you can make your own. Okay, that's all there is about adapter plates. Whenever a lifter's in a machine, if you change the size of the material, you're gonna need to alter the up position of the adapter plate. Very, very easy to do. Take a 19 millimeter or three quarter inch socket and break this bolt loose right here. It is 12 millimeter bolt in the slot and that will allow the lifter to be adjusted this way. Now, the lifter is in its activated mode right now. In other words, it's energized in the up position even though we can move it just because we broke that bolt loose. All we need to do is pull the adapter plate up to the bottom of our material, lock it down, and we're finished. Now, if I wanted to deactivate the lifter, let's go over to the control panel. I go to the upper left under lifters, lifter one and two, because that's how many lifters we've said that were in this machine. Now, if we check, click it, it automatically drops. And if we go back to it, you can see there's a check box there, which means the lifter has been taken out of automatic mode, it's in its down position. If we click it again, it comes up and we no longer have a checkbox right there. That's how you deactivate or activate automatic mode on the lifter. If you're doing a program and you're not using the lifter, you may want to go ahead and deactivate it just so you know it's always out of the way. Even though it will automatically get out of the way when the gantry goes by, it's a little bit of extra you know, security. Also, whenever you place a lifter in the machine, make sure you place it in the correct holes so that the slot, the slotted bolt right here is adjustable throughout its entire range. Okay, let's move on. Whenever you need to move the lifter up or down to a different position, you're gonna use a 10 millimeter hex wrench. I like to use the socket type so I could use an impact wrench. Now, you cannot get that in here with the lifter in the up position. So what you would do Go to the control panel, like I showed you early, earlier, deactivate it. Now you can get to it and you can pop it off real easy. It's held down by 12 millimeter serrated nuts, which means you don't need to use a wrench down there. As soon as you zip them off, the nut's gonna fall back. When you get to your new position, put the nut up there and it will kind of like keep itself in position because of the serrated edges. One other thing I'd like to talk about before we move too much further, when I was discussing how to adjust this, I showed you for round tubing. Well, what about that square tubing? What you're gonna to need to do then is have your square tubing loaded and you're gonna to wanna to rotate it a little bit and then just by eyeball, adjust that up position so that you can kind of tell that that square tubing is flowing nicely through that slot. Okay, let me go ahead and um, I'd like to go to the back of the machine to show you a couple things back there. You can see the tube coming out of the slot of the coolant tray, and if you notice, the tubes are going into another slot on the rib. So they come out, they go through that slot, and then a lot of times, a lot of people will literally just let them sit on the floor. 
The idea is never let the tube get up above the surface here because that's where the gantry is running through. So you always want it underneath it. It doesn't hurt a thing if it's laying on the floor. However, if you like a nice, neat insulation, all of the ribs have these slots all the way down so you can keep that tube off the floor. So anyway, that's what the rear of the machine looks like with the tube coming out of the tube guards. Let's walk on over to the assembly area where they're putting brand new machines together. And it's gonna be a little bit easier for me to show you the connectors at the control side of the machine. If we come right here, now, once again, this machine is being assembled, so that's why you don't see a door on it. You'll see a pneumatic control panel right there. On the back side of this control panel, those two regulators you were looking at, they're controlling like the round tube stabilizer or some other stuff. If we come to the rear right here, you can see a lot of black tubing right here. That black tubing is connected to two stabilizers because that's what the customer has ordered. Those tubes are going into two solenoids let me get this tube out of the way, right there. Now, they are connected with a push to connect pneumatic fitting. All you need to do is press down on the cap and the tube will come out. The reason I like to show you this is if for some reason your actuator is operating, instead of going up, it's going down, just flip those two tubes on one of the solenoids, whichever one is hooked to that regular or lifter, just reverse them. Now. Another thing you might want to do to make it easier is to actually put like colored electrical tape onto your tubing so that you can easily identify which way it goes. Because if we come over here and if we look at a cylinder, you can see we've got the tubes hooked to it, right? Well, it's a little bit difficult to get your hands up under there in order to swap them. It's generally easier to do it at the machine. Now, whenever you actually do move the lifter, before you bolt it down, you want to make sure that you have all your pneumatic hoses run up through here, connected to it, then place it in position and bolt it down, and that should eliminate that particular problem. All right, let's head back over to the machine. I think it might be a good idea for me to show you how to actually remove the lifter and the proper way to place it back into the machine. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is go around to the rear of the machine and turn off the air supply. Now that the air is off at the machine, we need to kind of like depressurize the system. We could do that relatively easy. Our pneumatic tubes use push to connect connectors. And if I push on it on the, tube, the round tube stabilizer in this particular machine, you can hear it drain the air down. That's just a quick hack right there in order to, to basically unpower the lifter. All right, now to get the lifter out of there, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the 12 millimeter hex bolt entirely. Alrighty. And that's that little bracket I was telling you about underneath. You can see where it's keyed so that it doesn't spin. We can go ahead and remove that bolt. And now we're gonna switch over from the 19 millimeter socket to our 10 millimeter hex. And I'm just gonna hold the nut on the bottom, spin it off, do the same thing on the rear one. Remember I was telling you they're serrated nuts so they're real easy to work with? At this point, I can now lift the entire assembly out of the machine. Now, of course, it's still hooked by, let me roll it this way, it's still hooked by the pneumatic lines right there. I'll take a little a picture so you can see a little bit better. If you notice, the front tube, we have orange tape wrapped around it so that if we ever need to disconnect them, which we're getting ready to, we're gonna be able to identify which one to put, you know, put back on the right fitting. The orange goes to the front. All right, to disconnect these things, what you do is there's a little cap. All you do is you push on it and that will disconnect the hose right here. Now, I'm not gonna disconnect everything, there's no need. However, if we're gonna move it to a whole new position, we're gonna to need to feed this tubing back out through the machine. We do not want dirt and debris getting in this tube. Now, I've been shooting this whole video on this XR12 right here. This thing's been running for almost two years, so you, you'll get some dirt on it. I like to do my training videos on actual real machines that are operation, operational. So anyway, I'm gonna disconnect both of those, and then what I would like to do is take a piece of tape. Let me see, get it, a little piece of tape right here. Break it off, 
and just place it on the end of the tube and then wrap it around like that. I'll take a picture of that also. Now we can feed the tube in and out without getting the debris into the airlines. Once we've got it in our position and the tube's coming back through, we want to make sure we run the tubing up between the frame rails right here of the XR12. The XR6 isn't a big deal, it's going to be on the back side, but the XR12, you want it to come through the twin rails. At that point, we can now remove the tape covering the end of our tube and rehook everything back up. When you go ahead and replace the unit, take a look at the rails and what you're going to see between these flat countersunk bolts, there are four holes. You're always going to want to place the pivot bolts, the socket head cap screws, in one of the two front holes. That will ensure that the rear adjuster slider will line up with two of the rear holes. So let's just go ahead, place it in position like that right there, put it down. We can come along and take our 10 millimeter hex wrench or hex socket or whatever you want to call it, place the nut underneath it, and then lightly start it, and then tighten her up. Lightly start it so you don't cross thread it. But let's see. Oh, okay. Alrighty. Okay. Now let's place our unit back right here. I just pulled the cylinder back. Remember, it's not under any pressure, so I was able to pull it back. That gives me access so that I could place the 12 millimeter hex nut there, and then I will place our bracket underneath it after I switch over to a 19 millimeter or a three quarter inch socket. Let's place it up under it. And then same thing, lightly I'm gonna spin it, make sure I'm not um, breaking anything. There you go. Okay, now we can return to the back of the machine, energize everything, and up we go. Now, obviously, once we move the lifter, it is no longer adjusted vertically, so that's probably going to have to be redone also. So, let me go ahead and fire the air back up, and then we're going to cover what I believe is the last topic. The last thing we're going to need to do after we move the lifter to a new position is tell the machine where the lifter is at. So if you look at the machine moving right here, you could see that as the gantry approaches it, it's gonna drop and I'll go a little bit further and then we'll come back this way and she'll drop out of the way. The procedure to tell it where it's located is relatively simple. First thing we're gonna do is go over here to the control panel and we are going to deactivate the lifter put it in its down position. We are now simply gonna run the stabilizer because that's what's gonna hit the lifter if it gets in that area and the lifter doesn't drop. And we are gonna place the stabilizer above the pivot of the lifter. So let's move it right there. Okay, now we're gonna come back to the control panel over here and we are gonna go to, on the right side menu, we're gonna go down to settings and then we are gonna pick lifters right here. Now you can see this machine has equipped with two lifters. We could add more if we wanted to. However, lifter one is the one we're working with right now. See the checkbox? That means it has been enabled. Lifter two is not enabled. We don't have it in the machine. All we gotta do is where it says lifter position, go over and hit measure. And it just changed it to 65.8 inches. Now, that number is working off of the home position of the machine, wherever the home position happened to be set. That home position can be moved to different locations for different configurations. For instance, if we're gonna take out the round tube stabilizer and put or completely, or maybe put in the fixed plate stabilizer or the square tube, that home position could move. So what we do is we have what's called a dead band. And a dead band is when is the lifter going to get out of the way as the gantry is approaching? So at the whatever distance you want, 25, 30 inches away, that lifter will automatically drop. I like to keep the dead band up around 25, 30 inches because you don't really need to get any closer than that because that will allow us to move that bump stop like a foot either way and know that we're not going to have to worry about slamming into the, um, you know, the lifter itself. Keep in mind, 
the lifter position is determined where the bump stop, which sets the origin for the y-axis, is located. That's covered in another video. It's called homing. If you watch that, you'll completely understand what I'm talking about. So anyway, let's come back over here to the screen. And if you notice, this is the dead band I'm talking about right here. And we have a dead band offset, positive offset, which is the far end of the machine. That's the y-axis positive. And then we have a negative. Now, what I'd like to do is change this to 30 as I mentioned, and then I'm going to change this to minus 30 because we're on the negative side of it. And then I can hit save settings right here. Now I go back to plasma and I can move the machine again. So let me come over here so you can see that. Oops, you know what I did? Oh, I messed up. Oh, hell no. Let's get that up like that. Well, that wasn't very smart of me, but hey, I know what you're thinking. I thought he was perfect, but he's not. Remember, I disengaged the lifter. So let's go ahead and re-engage it. I'm actually kind of glad I did that so you can kind of see errors. All righty. So now, see how it's dropping? And we come back the other way. We got plenty of room to clear this. You set that dead band, whatever makes you feel comfortable. You can literally have it. 40 inches on each side, it wouldn't hurt a thing because if you're within 40 inches of a stabilizer, you're not experienced a droop or anything like that because you're just so doggone close. Alrighty, that's everything we need to talk about, the operation, the mechanics and everything. Um, I guess we're done. Anyway, I really appreciate you taking time out to watch this training video and look for other ones and have a great day. Goodbye.